Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about everything board game related. I am your host, Jeremy Salinas, and I am here to talk about Vast, the Crystal Caverns, a genre-defining game that has been released at Gen Con 2016 by Letter Games. To talk about this game, I'm here with my co-host, David Waybright. Hello, everyone. This is uh, quite the game for sure. Jeremy Jeremy put it well by saying genre-defining, almost maybe even genre-breaking. I'm not sure that uh, anyone's going to be able to follow this up with a uh, copycat game, because yeah. this is unlike anything I've ever played, yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is definitely a game at the show that you have not played before. I'm confident in saying that. <laughs> so, um, this is a 1-5 to five player asymmetric game. Asymmetric. Okay, so uh, before we get into the game itself, uh, I-, I went up to my game collection and looked a little bit online about... Uh, what asymmetric games are. And for you people that aren't uh, board game connoisseurs like we are and our vast population of people that watch, an asymmetric game is where you have a ability or a character or a role or a class in front of you that has special abilities or skills or maybe a set of cards that's different than everyone else yeah. in the game, right? Something... You know, the, the players play the game in a different fashion at, at a very basic right. level. Right, so we're talking about very popular games like um, Cry Havoc, which is being released, uh, War of the Ring, um, some games I wrote down, Chaos on the Old World, Small World, Terra Mystica, and one of my favorite games of all time, Eclipse. Uh, in Eclipse, when you have a special ability, you're doing things like you're colonizing faster, mm-hmm. or you get to move quicker, or you have ships in the game that um, are maybe a little bit more powerful or more skilled at certain areas. Vast has all of those things, but in those games I just previously mentioned, all of those things um, uh, work in the same way into the game. You're you're funneling into the same kind of gameplay, right? Yeah, you're playing the game the same way. In a way, those are a taste of asymmetric gameplay just through variable powers, right? Right. Uh, This one not only has variable powers, but... The game plays significantly different, if not completely different, depending yes. on what role you're taking. Yes. Even even the the uh, way you win the game right. is completely different for all five categor- roles. Yeah, I have not played anything in my 20-plus years of playing board games, anything like this before. Um, it's a little bit bewildering. Uh, <laughs> there are yeah. a lot of rules, and sometimes the rules aren't... R- written in the best possible language. Yeah, the, I, I, they're they're written probably about as well as they could be. This yes. game just has so much going on. Right. I honestly think it would probably take maybe even ten plays because you, you'd want to play all the different roles before you even understood yeah. it. Like, I know about a couple of the roles, but you know about a few more. Yeah. I haven't played all five roles, I'll admit to you right now. I don't yeah. think Jeremy has either. But uh, we're definitely going to do our best to explain them. Yes, for we sure. will. And don't let what we're saying deter you at all. This is a phenomenal game. Oh, we'll yeah. get to our thoughts at the end. Um, just know it's a little bit daunting. We're going to go through each of these roles very quickly to explain to you what each of them kind of do, mm-hmm. the aspect of them, how they play differently, why they're different, and how the gameplay kind of works for each of them. So we'll start off with the Knights. Now... I have the knight here in front of me. The knight is kind of the hero or the protagonist uh, in the game. Um, Each of these five roles that you can play in the game work uh, in a very specific turn order. And before we get into the knight, uh, very quickly, you can play this game one to five players, right? Mm -hmm. And you can play, uh, if if you're the knight, you probably want to play with the goblins. And if you have the goblins to play, you want to play with the dragon in sequential order. However, there's a whole slew of things in the back of the book where you can mix and match whatever it is. Variants upon variants, they have variants that allow you to play one against many. Yes. Um, So, and we haven't even scratched the surface with those. We haven't even tried those yet. But the the basic level of the game, yeah, you want to start with the knight. It's kind of like the... The would, typical role-playing no, style. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's again. what you'd expect when you're jumping into a game like this. And then as you progress through the roles, it's completely not at all what you might expect. Right. So uh, this is kind of a, what the game will look like after several turns in yeah. the game, right? So Maybe. We, we, don't, we, don't, we obviously aren't going to play through it, but you get an idea of how the board is laid out. Um, just very quickly, you have some, some spaces in here. These are called tiles or cavern tiles. Some of them will be face up when you explore them. Some of them are dark or face down when they have not been explored. We'll get into that in a little bit. So let's get back to the night, all right? <laughs> all right. So the night is your typical uh, role-playing game. 
game type of thing. He builds up, he levels up, he has more abilities as you level him, he has uh, extensions to those abilities. Uh, so on your turn, basically you'll have starting two hero cubes to be able to start with, right? Uh, during your turn, which is kind of unique to this game, you don't have to place these hero cubes on any of these three main attributes or any of your four other special abilities. You get to do whatever you want, and then if you need to use these cubes, you can place them. The three main things you're going to do with the hero is uh, you're going to uh, increase your movement, which allows you to move throughout the board. Anytime he lands on a dark space, you have to stop and explore that area. Perception allows you to do an encounter on a space when you get there. Now sometimes you'll have several different encounters there. You'll uh, encounter goblins or the dragon or a face down tile or a treasure. With just one encounter point, you can encounter everything on that tile, right? right? And the last thing you will have is strength, and you can boost up any of these abilities um, once per turn, or as many times as you have cubes per turn. Strength is your basic attribute uh, for being able to battle the thief or the dragon, the dragon or the goblins or any of the other things that um, will be attacking you or you will be attacking. Um, now, the cool thing about the game is... Uh, you will gain experience, or what they call grit in the game, by doing certain uh, things in the game. For instance, you can reveal a cavern tile, just simply going to a place and finding a new cavern tile, or smashing crystals that the dragon leads behind, or, or crystals that are uh, already based inside of the cavern itself. All these things will allow you to move this grit throughout this board on the right-hand side. When you pass these locations, you're going to gain another hero cube, which allows you to take more movements and more perception and more strength and be able to use your bomb to blow up walls or to hurt the dragon, to use your bow to be able to right. kill goblins, you know, to be able to use or walk through walls with an ancient map or be able to not be pushed aside by the dragon by putting up your shield. Yeah, it's really cool. If, if you've ever played any role-playing game, either yeah. tabletop or video game, the whole progression of gaining XP or grit in this instance, and then unlocking new abilities the cool thing that i like about the abilities is that you're able to on each turn with the knight yes hold back and use them how you see fit so depending on your situation yeah if you're going to be fighting you can go heavy on strength that round that round yeah exactly or if you're just going to be exploring you don't see anything else around you can go heavy in perception so that you can uncover more on tiles uh movement so on and right. so forth it just you can you can vary it depending on your situation which i think is really cool right. uh, although on the on the receiving end of that, it's not so cool. Yeah. But when, when Jeremy played the knight, he was able to kind of adjust to what the other players were doing. So, so what is the goal of the knight? The, goals, <laughs> the goal of the knight is simple. Get in there, kill the dragon, and get back to the exit or the entrance to the cavern. That's all you have to do. So your primary purpose is to avoid the goblins so they don't kill you, and get the dragon, kill him, and get back out. Which yeah. takes us to... <laughs> The goblins. Well, the goblins, yeah. Before we get to the dragon, takes us to the goblins. The goblins, like we said at the beginning, they play completely different than the knight does. Everything that we just discussed with the knight mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the goblins. Yes. On the goblins' turn, you're basically going to be, with the goblins in general, uh, delicately balancing these different statistics. Right. I think more so than any of the other Absolutely. classes. You've got rage and their population. You've got three different tribes that you're managing, and each tribe has some special unique abilities to them. Um, but what you're going to do is you start with one rage. That rage allows you to draw one war card. On the war card, it's going to simply tell you how you have to increase the population for... The various tribes. Right, right. So you're going to put those populations out on the tribes, and then you go down here. This is the monster card. It tells you how many monsters you can draw. Right. You draw one of the monsters, and the various tribes uh, can carry... All of them can carry one. One of the tribes can carry two. And the monsters are basically... Uh, along with another card I'll get to in a second, allow you to more flexibly... Mm -hmm. Uh, beat up on the night. Well, or beat up or on the night. Other abilities. Or, but more specifically, manage those statistics that I was talking yeah. about. Because those statistics, you're kind of a slave to these cards. You yeah. flip over this card and your population's going up. But there are cards that allow you to kind of keep your population in check. Because if you overpopulate... You scatter. You scatter. Yeah. So you don't want to overpopulate. You don't want... Uh, too little rage. Yeah. And all of those things, unfortunately, on the cards are usually working against each right. other, so you're right. kind of trying to have to manage the sweet spot for all of those. Right. Um, and the go the goblin's goal, Jeremy, is to kill the knight. The knight. Yeah. So 
The goblin doesn't care about killing the dragon. The goblin doesn't care much about the thief. Yeah. The goblin's goal is to kill the knight. Yep. So if there are two people playing and it's the knight and the goblins, they're head to head. Yep. But it gets more interesting as we go around and add yeah, more roles, yeah. though. So the next player to go after the knight, the goblins, is a third character, and that's the dragon. These all go in sequential order. So right. The, the, dra- the dragon's my favorite, and this is the one I've played the most. And this is the coolest. Uh, I'm going to start with He's what, pretty awesome. what you're yeah. trying to do as the dragon. Yeah. He's been asleep for hundreds of years. Yeah. So your goal with the dragon is to wake up. Yeah. So there's all these cubes right here that represent his slumber. Yeah. So when you're doing things in the game to achieve, you know, whatever you might achieve, similar to the knight's grit, if you will. Right. You're going to be able to do things to remove these sloth uh, cubes and put them down here on your wakefulness track. And kind of similar to the uh, grit track with the knight, as you go up, as you fill up the wakefulness track, it allows you more power. You're able to draw more power cards to use on your turn, things like that. But his goal is to wake up, and kill the knight. And as you can see on there, there's a ton of different powers you can oh, use yeah. with the dragon, too. So he, cards that allow you to use his wings or his claws or to bite people or to claw people or to, to fly or to move quickly. All kinds of different abilities by using the powers of the cards, which represent claws, wings, and Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, the, basic, the basic thing he can do is he can move. And when he moves, it's interesting, unlike a lot of the other figures, the dragon moves one to two spaces in a straight line. You know, because he's a big dragon, he can't be making sharp turns. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you're going to be using whatever power cards you have. And like I said, your power cards dependent on how awakened you are, if you will. So then you can use those to expand. And like Jeremy was just saying, some of these powers will let you move a little bit more. Some of them will let you attack. Some of them will let you, you know, there's one where I can flap my wings and it sends the knight further away from me. Because remember, the cool. knight's trying to kill the dragon. Yeah. So... There's, all the roles really are cool yeah. in that you can kind of affect one another and mess with what, you know, what everyone's trying to achieve. Right. The fourth person to go is the cave. Yeah, this, one's pretty, the, this is the craziest the, one. This cave is, the is pretty cool. So the cave does a couple different things. Uh, he's going to lay tiles on the board in very specific ways to pester the players from moving quickly through it. And his whole goal is to collapse. <laughs> uh, to collapse once all the tiles have been played onto the board. And each turn, uh, more tiles are added. Once they've all been played, uh, every turn that is his turn, he's allowed to remove three. And eventually, the the whole cave will collapse, right? Yeah. So on his turn, basically, he does a couple different things. The first thing he's going to do, he's going to draw on this bag that you see here a number of omen tiles uh, that uh, is equal to um, the treasures and the crystals that are on the board. He's going to use those omens to power the abilities that he has that turn, right? Um, With the whole goal of just pestering the heck out of people to slow them down from progressing from the goblin killing the knight and from the knight killing the dragon from the dragon leaving so all these different things he's trying to do just to slow everyone down right right it's def- the cave's definitely i think the big hook whenever i've described this game to someone and they're like okay okay and then you say and one player can be the cave uh-huh. they're like what <laughs> the cave like the dungeon master no the cave. Yeah. So, and it's really cool what Jeremy was just describing, too. The board itself is what fuels the cave's abilities. You know, so it's all about board management. It really kind of fuels cave. all the abilities because the dragons can use the treasures. Right, that's true. You know, the knights can use the treasures. Even the goblins can plunder the treasures and be able to power their abilities and their rage and their, uh, you know, the treasure cards that they get, uh, which we forgot to mention. Knights have treasures and side quests that they can complete through the course of the game, too. So there's a lot of different right. things going on, right? The thief is number five, and he's actually pretty cool. So his whole goal is to, he, he's undying. So he dies a ton in the game. <laughs> Everything practically kills the thief. But his whole goal in the game is like to, playing Dark Souls. Yeah, is to, <laughs> is to sneak around and grab um, either six dragon gems or six treasures, a combination of those, to break his undying curse. Really freaking yeah. cool idea, right? So uh, on his turn, he has these stat tokens that are number two, three, and four that he's going to place on his board that allows him to do specific things on his turn. And he's, again, he's one of those characters that's kind of a um, antagonist. He can backstab the dragon, backstab the knight. Uh, he can pick locks and get through doors easy. He can pickpocket. He can steal stuff from people. But every time he dies, 
he drops all the loot that he's acquired, which, remember, he needs to yeah. grab six, and then other people can go pick up that loot to power their abilities. Yeah, it's really interesting, because when, when you take all five roles into account, you know, the knight needs to kill the dragon, the goblin kills the knight, the dragon needs to get out, um, and the, uh, the cave is trying to attack Clash. everybody, but the thief is unique in that he's kind of just doing his... He's just trying to do his own thing. Uh-huh. It's not necessarily against anyone. He's just doing his own thing, kind of hoping that no one stops him from doing that. And he's got some unique abilities, too. He can move through the shadows and through the dark areas that typically are locked down from the night to be able to move in. So he's a little bit sneakier, a little bit uh, stealthier with his actions. So um, that's just the base of the game. Now, as we said, it comes with a ton of different variants that you can use. It comes with special tiles that you could use in the game. It also comes with a solo um, aspect to it that you can choose the difficulty of how hard it is wow. for you to get through. So there's a lot of things to consider. Um, what do you think, man? Well, be honest. It, well, I, it's hard to say that I love it because, like I said, I need to play it so much more to really get yeah. a good appreciation for it. I agree. I will say this. I can say this with certainty. The experience is absolutely unlike anything I've ever experienced before in, in tabletop yeah. gaming, and I would venture to guess that it's different than anything any of you have yeah. played to date. Yeah. It is so unique and takes asymmetry to a completely new level it is mind-boggling that it's able to work so well, especially with up to five roles. Very well. You know, we like I said, we haven't played enough to really determine that it, if it's perfect. But on our on our plays, we're, I haven't seen anything that no. suggests that something's broken or anything like that. No. It's uh, there, I, you, I think you'll get some favorite roles. Yeah. Um, you know, I really like the dragon. I just love the concept of waking up. I, I haven't played the cave yet, but that's another one I think would be a favorite with a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, this is the challenge for the game. Um, this is the knight's rules, right? Yeah, that's, 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 one, the player that's, one, player that's the player basically. sheet for one player. And as we said, each of these roles are completely different. So there is a large learning curve. And... The designer knows this. I mean, he yeah. knows that he's going to be challenged in teaching people this game. But as you said, this is something completely new. Uh, for instance, Carcassonne, right? It's the first game, really, that introduced map tiles to games. Yeah. Right? Agricola. Uh, Kalis came before it. We understand that. But Agricola was really the big worker placement game that came out. Dominion was the big deck Didn't building. Sure. And then we were introduced to uh, Ticket to Ride, which used cards in a rummy style fashion to lay components on the board, right? You look at Vast, and asymmetric games have been done many, many times, but not like this. Not in a way that the actual gameplay for each individual player is completely different on a board that works in unison for everybody that is playing in the game. It's amazing to think at how much thought must have gone into designing this game and like you said, we've played this many times now, and there's no... The rules are difficult to understand, and they're not the easiest to read, but we didn't run into any kinks in the game where we said, that's broken. That no, doesn't work. Nothing is broken. There's some characters that are a little trickier to learn than others. The, the goblins, goblins The goblins are a little rough. Um, I mean, I, base, I think they're, sure. they're a lot of fun once you master them. I can see someone mastering any of these mm -hmm. and just loving playing each and every role. Um, the, one of the tricky things, too, is if, if you haven't played all the roles, which most people aren't, honestly. I mean, yeah. even if you own this game, it's probably going to be hard to get around and play every single role. But you really need to get an appreciation for how the other roles work yeah. so that you understand what the dynamic is. Because I remember the first time we played, you know, I was really just focused on the dragon. In fact, that's the only thing I knew of the game mm -hmm. because I didn't have, I had no clue, didn't even want to know how the goblins worked. Yeah. But so I was just focused on what I was doing. But if you don't take into account what everyone else is trying to achieve and how those things affect your game, mm -hmm. then it makes it even a, a little bit more challenging. But fun. I mean, it was a great experience it's to go. Oh, compelling. I see how. Yeah. You're going to crush those crystals, and that makes it so I can't do this. Yeah. Like which would which would affect the cave significantly. Yeah. We all can crush crystals, and that's going to affect how many uh, cards the cave can draw. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a fascinating game. Um, and like, you know, like we said early on, 
we probably missed a lot in the rules rundown. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, I know for a fact I mentioned that the dragon needs to kill the knight. That's not even accurate. The dragon just needs to wake up and get out of the That's right. get out of the That's cave. That's right. That's right. Um, but I, I really like the game. I hope we can get it to the table more often. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a daunting game to bring out unless everyone has played it. Uh, if there's a new player or two... Yeah, I mean, this is a game that you literally have to give somebody the sheet and say, this is what you need yeah, the to day before to be able to play it. Um, you have to. The great thing is that's all you have to know. You really don't need to know the other rules. That's players true. To get an appreciation for what the game is. And then once you've learned that, you'll start picking up on the other races or the other classes and what they can do. Uh, it's it's phenomenal. I, I, I think that people are going to be very surprised by this game when they first play it. I think that... Uh, some of the gamers who are hardcore gamers have been playing games for a long, long, long time will be super surprised by this game and, and really delve into it. This is one of those games that reminds me of Twilight Imperium, where you learn the rules and it's this, this huge brain burner, but once you learn it, you're like, tonight we're playing Vast. Next week, we're oh, yeah. playing Vast. The week this, after that, we're playing Vast. I don't get many games out repeatedly, but if I had a group who were all committed enough to this one, mm-hmm. I could see this one very much being a game that I'm like, let's play Vast every other week. Yeah. Or, you know, every, you know, this is the one that we want to bring out every once in a while, do another Vast, maybe even start to rotate the roles. Yeah. Um, again, though, I, <laughs> I would have a hard time giving up my favorite roles You're and right. wanting to try something new. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun, and like Jeremy said, it comes out at Gen Con mm-hmm. uh, next week, and I think the demo table for this thing is going to be a blast. Yeah, the people who sit down and are willing to commit the time to to learning it and running through the demo. I think are going to be hooked. Yeah. I, I can't imagine anyone. There's going to be a lot of people talking about this game at the show. Yeah. Um, and like I, I think a lot of people don't know about it, so it's we'll see. It'll be interesting to see what the talk about Vast is post Gen Con. Yeah. So guys, if you have any questions about the game, uh, shoot us an email. <laughs> we'll right? try to answer. We'll, it. we'll try to answer it as best we can. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you guys at Gen Con. Come up and say hi to us. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> All right, take care, guys. Bye bye.